Hey YouTube, John here, and today we're going to be taking a look at these Quantum uh, Generation 1 DIY FPV goggles. Primarily what we're going to be looking at is wiring them and getting the components mounted, the receiver and the battery. And you know, we just finished putting these together last night and assembly went pretty uneventful. The constructions are clear um, and for $25 I've got to say this is probably one of the best FPV deals in the market. Um, these are my first set of goggles, so I wasn't going to go out and spend three, four, five hundred dollars on a set of fat shocks. Uh, am I going to probably wind up going that way? More than likely, if I do like FPV. Um, but for the time being, for a cheap investment, I figured this was the way to go. So, after we get everything wired up, put together, we realized that we had literally nine feet of cable that we got to get on a device that's supposed to fit on your head. So we started looking at different procedures and techniques on, on getting the wiring tidied up and I just couldn't find anything that I really liked. Um, so I think what we're going to go ahead and do is just kind of work through this and, and figure out how we're going to mount everything. And um, hopefully at the end of it we wind up with something that works well and something that's helpful to somebody. So I think first thing we'll do is we're going to get the receiver and the battery mounted. And this is the same receiver that you would get if you bought the bundle pack from Hobby King. I actually bought this receiver separate from Banggood, you know, primarily because I had points with Banggood. So it was a lot cheaper to do it that way. Banggood has free shipping. So I just went that route. So I don't have the, the cabling that would come with the uh, Hobby King kit. I did buy this LiPo from Hobby King. It's a 1500 milliamp hour, uh, 25C, uh, 7.4 volt battery. It's pretty lightweight for a uh, 1500 milliamp hour battery, so we're gonna go ahead and use this. And um, so yeah, let's uh, let's get these two components mounted, and then we'll figure out the wiring afterwards. So now my plan for this is to keep all the weight off of the front of the goggles because they're already just by the length of them very front heavy, and I think adding any weight to the front of them at all is gonna make it want to pull off your face and just be uncomfortable to wear. So my plan is to use the excessive uh, headband strap here. It's pretty pretty stretchy. Um, and this will vary depending on the size of your head. You know, if you have a lot more or a lot less. But in my case, I should have just enough here um, to basically hot glue a loop. You know, kind of like that. I'll cut it off, make a loop, and then loop one here and loop one here. And that way I can mount the receiver to the back and mount the battery to the side and hopefully with them being on the on the strap instead of being on the goggle it'll be a lot more comfortable to wear them that way so we're just going to go ahead and figure out how long we need these two sections to be we'll cut them off we'll make them in a loop we'll hot glue them and we'll see how it works so from playing around with the stuff for the ruler here um, i've determined that this can stretch to about uh twice its length pretty easily um, and I've measured this to be, you know, I've measured every, every side of it and got a total of six inches. So that would mean we would only need three inches of material. Um, but I don't want it too tight so that it, it, I don't want, since we're just going to be hot gluing it, I don't want too much pressure on it. So we'll go three and a half with a half inch of overlap. So we're going to cut this at four inches. So nothing too exact about this so we'll just set it up at four inches let's we'll go ahead and cut it so this is going to be the strap it's going to hold the receiver you see it goes right around you know with a good amount of tension so we we'll get we know it's going to hold the receiver snugly so what we'll do is we'll just take this We'll run a bead of hot glue on it, and we will just glue it right back to itself. So we have a nice little circle here. So I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and do that off camera, and um, we'll do the same thing for the battery, and we'll see how they fit. So I was gonna do the first one off camera, but I figured I'll do it on just to clarify any questions. So here's the section that I cut off, and I'm just gonna go ahead and run a bead of hot glue down there like so and I'm going to fold it back onto itself I 
and just stick it together like that. I'll probably just run one more bead down the edge here just to keep it from fraying and I may turn it inside out and do the same thing on the inside um, just to make sure it's a good and strong seal there and it's not going to come apart but that's about all there is to it all right so there's that one all set we have it like I said hot glued together and then I just stretched it up over the top of the uh, strap stretched around the receiver and we should be good to go I think the only thing I may do is I might just put a dab of hot glue on here just to hold it still because it's going to want to flop around or maybe it might be a good thing to just let it hang like that. Um, I don't know. I guess that'll be kind of up to personal preference. I'm going to try it on my head quick and, and see how it feels and, and make a decision from there. But the only thing we have to do now is just do the same exact thing only for the battery and I'm going to wind up mounting the battery up here and uh, that'll be that. Then we'll just have to get it wired. So I'm going to go do that off camera, and when we get back, we'll do some wiring. So there we go. The battery's all mounted as well. And the only thing I did different with the battery one um, is I made it slightly larger. Uh, it still is a good snug fit, but just in case, you know, I, I get a replacement battery or, or get a spare battery, it's not the exact same size. We get plenty of room to, to play around with. And I opted to keep them loose so you could slide them around. Um... Because I found that, it, you know, if, if someone else was wearing them or, or for some reason my comfort changed, I can slide it around without a problem and uh, make it more comfortable for me. So overall, I'm happy with how it feels. Uh, it definitely takes a lot of weight off the front of it and moves it to the back where you really don't feel it because, you know, the strap's holding it on your head. So I'm real happy with how that turned out. So now we're just going to go ahead and uh, tackle this wiring. And like I said at the beginning, the... The wiring is kind of crazy because um, you figure here's this goes from the receiver to the screen like that and that's three feet of cable not including the end on the screen then you have three feet of power wire for the receiver and then you have three feet of power wire for the uh, screen so I don't know where they thought you were going to mount the battery or how big they thought your head was, but I don't think we need three feet. So I think what's going to wind up happening is we're going to be cutting these down. Um, what I'd like to do is just get rid of this whole mess right here on the end of the screen and probably cut it back to here. And then we don't need the red one because that's for audio. So we'll, we'll peel that back and cut that off and we'll cut this jack off as well and solder it directly to the video input and um, we'll probably do something similar with the power feed uh, just to get rid of all this extra wire. We really don't need it. It's heavy. It's bulky. So I guess we'll start with the audio or uh, the video first because that's going to be probably the most complicated and then we'll go to the battery and we'll just kind of make it one nice tight fitting harness and um, get this thing buttoned up. So let me move some stuff out of the way. We'll get the soldering iron out and some wire strippers and we'll start on the wire. So we'll start off with the video cable that goes to the receiver. And what we're gonna do is we have to cut this open and see what's inside. Um, it, they're gonna do this one of two ways. What they usually have is, or they always have, is the center pin is gonna be your signal. And then this on the outside is your ground, and that's going to be used as shielding. So inside this cable, you're either going to find two separate wires, a, uh, a signal and a ground, or you're going to find a signal wire with a insulation around it, and then there's going to be a ground wire that completely surrounds it, and that's going to be used for shielding, followed by the secondary insulation. So since we know we don't need the red one, I'm just going to go ahead and lop that right off and we'll see what we have in here. So I'm going to get a pair of wire strippers. It's not the best pair of strippers for the job, but they should do. And we're just going to pull this insulation off the outside.
There we go. And that's just what they've done. They have... Your signal wire running down the center. Let's see, I'll pose up to the camera so you can see it. See if we can get the focus. There we go. You have your signal wire here, which is the red wire. And then you have a ground wire, which is right here. So definitely not a big deal. All we'll have to do is attach, when we attach it to the screen, is just solder the signal wire to the signal wire, and then solder the shielding wire to the shielding wire. Make sure we insulate them separately, and uh, we'll be good to go. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and just peel this red one all the way back to the jack, and we're gonna um, just cut it off there, throw some heat shrink over it to protect it, make sure it doesn't short out against anything. And then we'll figure out how long we need the yellow cable, which is going to be our video cable. And um, we'll cut that down and get that ready to solder. And we'll do the same thing on the, on the um, screen end. And we'll attach them together. So what I did is I just took that red wire, I peeled it all the way back, and I cut it off. And then I mounted this back on my head and plugged it in and just kind of felt and saw where the video cable needed to be as far as length and I plan on joining them together somewhere around here so I still left it a little bit long um, just to give myself room to, to shift it around if I had to um, and, and just you don't want things too tight so we'll go ahead and we'll strip this back and prep this and then we're gonna go and we're gonna cut this open I think we're gonna cut it open up here and uh, prep this end for soldering as well and get these two wires attached. So now that the video cable is all prepped for soldering, we're gonna go ahead and uh, do the same kind of exploratory surgery to this. Cause I really wanna get rid of this big bundle on the end here. It just, it just seems like it's real excessive. So go ahead, we'll just lop this right off and we'll see what we have in here. So I guess we'll strip it off of this end first, just to see what we got. That way if we had to do any resistance, uh, any continuity testing to see what wires go where, if it wasn't obvious, um, we can do it. So we'll do the same thing with these terrible wire strippers. Being careful, there we go. And what we have in here is a total of four wires. We have red, which is gonna be our power. We have white, which is going to be our audio. And then we have yellow, which is gonna be our video. And then black is gonna be ground. So when we go and solder the video feed, we're actually gonna to have to solder the power feed at the same time, because this ground is gonna to have to be attached to both the battery ground to power the screen it's also gonna have to be attached to the video ground to give a shielding for our video wire. So we'll explain all that when it comes time to solder it together. But that's actually a lot simpler of a layout than I was expecting to find there. So we'll go ahead and we'll strip it back on this end and we'll prepare it for soldering. And just a quick tip before we get this thing soldered together. Um, if you're soldering multiple wires in one harness like this, it's always best to stagger them. You can see I've cut them each at like half inch intervals. That way you don't wind up with just one lump of soldered wires in one spot. And when you put the heat shrink over, it looks a lot neater. And you're not worried about these two wires kind of chafing together and, and rubbing through the heat shrink uh, while they're in the harness. So just something I do, I'm, I'm in the automotive field, so you know, things moving around is a lot more prevalent than say in, in this case, but uh, always the best practice when you're, you're soldering things together like this. Now before we start permanently attaching wires here, um, it's going to be a good idea to go ahead and take a large piece of heat shrink and just run it up to the screen. And that way we can cover all of these wires with the heat shrink afterwards. You definitely don't want to get all of these done and neatly soldered and then find out that you don't have a heat shrink on. So definitely do that first. Okay, since we know that this is where the video wire is definitely going to wind up, we can go ahead and solder that together or solder that together depending on where you're from. Just tin this up. This iron is definitely overkill for what we're doing here. You know, that's all it takes. And 
We got our heat shrink on there, so we'll just slide the heat shrink over. Like so. And we'll heat it up. And that's it, the video wire is on. So now we'll have to sort out what we're gonna do with our uh, power and ground feeds for the camera and for the receiver. And we'll get those soldered together and we'll throw some heat shrink over the whole deal and, and we'll be done. So that's the video signal all wired up. So I think what we'll do next is we'll determine how we're gonna power the receiver. And what we'll do, they gave this nice long cable with a JST on it but I'd like to run everything off of one battery. So I, what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and take, we know it's going to the same spot, so we'll make this the same length as the video cable. So we'll just kind of eyeball it, nothing, nothing too crazy. So we'll cut this off right here, and we'll splice it right in to the power and ground feed for the, for the um, screen. And then that way they'll all plug into the same battery and they'll all power up at the same time when you plug the battery in. So we'll go ahead, strip this back, prepare this for soldering on there. And at the same time, we're gonna take the battery cable that came with the lens, with the screen, and we're gonna cut that off. I was gonna switch this cable over to a JST, but I kinda like the style connector. And I'll probably, if I do get a spare battery, I'll just buy another one of these. And um, that way I don't wind up using these batteries for something else. They'll just be dedicated to the goggles. So I'll cut this off and we'll strip this back and get this ready for soldering in too. I wound up doing all the soldering and heat shrinking off camera only because it was real small and fiddly and I just couldn't find the right camera angle so I just gave up and soldered it. Um, but literally all I did is took all the power feeds that were remaining, the one from the battery, the one from the receiver, and the one for the screen and I soldered them together and ran some heat shrink over them. And then I took all of the ground feeds, again, the one from the receiver, the one from the battery, the shielding wire for the video output, and the ground for the screen. And I just soldered all them together. So now all I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna run a couple of runs of electrical tape around this, um, just, to, to take some strain off of it and, and kind of bring it up to the same size diameter as these wires. And then I'll run the heat shrink over them, like so. We'll heat shrink it and we'll be done. We'll be ready to test it out. So again, I'm just gonna do this off camera. Uh, I think everyone knows how to wrap electrical tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And uh, when I come back, we're gonna test this thing. Okay, here's the finished product. And it definitely came out a lot better than I expected. Um, I'm very happy that we were able to get rid of a lot of that excess wiring. It was just ridiculous. Um, we have it all nice and, and joined together here with the heat shrink, so it kind of blends right in. Here is the power feed. You know, we have the battery right here, mounted on the battery strap, and then we have all the cables for the receiver running through the battery strap just to tighten them up a little bit. And, I mean, it may look a little bit bulky right here, but it actually feels good on your head. And it looks a lot less bulky when it's all you know mounted on your head than, than some of the other setups that I've seen. So I'm definitely super happy with it. And I got my um, FPV transmitter set up here in the kitchen. So let's power it up. There we go, receiver's powered. And there's our video signal coming in. So awesome, I'm, I'm super happy with it. Um, turn on my antenna on it so it's a little fuzzy. I'm super happy with how it came out. Uh, I hope this video was helpful to someone. Hopefully it gives someone some ideas, maybe help you out with your project. Um, if it was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, definitely leave a comment down below. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.